Hello, this is Johnny Garrison with Hellbender Fly Fishing, and today we're going to tie a patch rubber leg. Um, you hear these called like a girdle bug sometimes. It's just a stone fly pattern with rubber legs. Pretty simple, pretty easy. We use them a lot here in the mountains. Um, the hook we're tying on today is a TMCO 5263 in a size 8. Any of these little 2X long streamer type hooks work really well. I'm using just a plain old tungsten bead. This happens to be a 4 millimeter. I like these kind of heavy in the winter time. They'll, they'll really get down for you. And then we're going to use chenille for the body. This is a small stonefly chenille in a coffee black color, which I like. It gives a nice uh, variegation to it. And then I'm going to use rubber legs on this. This is a uh, small black rubber leg. This pack right here from Hairline happens to be like a brown medium. You could use any of those. I just like the way that the rubber legs that are made, the round ones are made in these strips that all come together. You can kind of see you can pull them apart. And I'll take two of them and I'll pull them apart at the same time and leave them hooked up together. And it makes it a lot easier to tie with. Um, let's see, what else? We've got lead wire that we'll be using for some more weight to get it even get it a little even heavier. It's a .020 lead wire. And then I'm just using some 70 denier olive uh, TMC. That tends to be the thread I use all the time. Uh, to save us a little time today, I took a hook and I went ahead and put a bead on it and wrapped some lead on it. I've got about 10 to 12 wraps of lead wire. You can pre-do these like this. Um, that lead will slide up and down, that bead will slide up and down. If you're doing a big batch of these, it'll make your life a lot easier. Hopefully I got that really straight in the hook. What I do is I slide everything back and I start my thread up here at the front and that's how I get those rubber legs in front of that bead. It's a very effective method. So I take my little strip of rubber leg here that I've got two pieces together and I'll size that to about the length of the hook. I like mine about that. You can go crazy with them, make them really long, you make them really short, it just depends. The big thing is to have a little movement. And you get that using these smaller rubber legs on these, on these bigger hooks, I really think it helps. And I go down pretty small on the sizes of these. You can tie these things really small, but I'll, I'll, I'll go down to like, maybe like a, a 10 sometimes is about as small as I like to go, but you can get down to even 12s or 14s if you wanted to. I tend to use this eight size probably more than any. So now you can see I've got my bead, my wire, I've got my legs on, everything's nice and pushed up to the front. Sometimes you're gonna do things like that. I split my thread there on that wire a little bit. We'll wrap it back up, that'll be okay. It'll, it'll get itself straightened out here. We're just trying to put a little bit of thread around that wire to kind of catch it in. Now, an important part of this is to make sure that the body tapers nicely up to that wire. You don't want a big bulbous front end and a small little back end. As a matter of fact, some people make these things pretty fat in the middle and they'll take and do a whole bunch of thread under them kind of kind of build your own adventure kind of fly. I like mine to have just a nice little smooth taper to them. So I'll start my doubled up rubber legs here. And you notice I left those rubber legs together on the front. I'm gonna leave these rubber legs together on the back. It makes it a little easier as you're tying. They're kind of out of your way. And I'm stretching these a little bit and kind of letting them wrap back up to the top of the hook. You don't want to really cinch these things down too much. You can cut them. Um, I just shot another one of these videos of this and ripped one of the legs off. It can happen. If that happens, it's okay. I'm going to fish that fly, but we sat here to tie another one so you guys can see it how we want it to look. And I use the same places every time when I'm marking these so that my legs are all about the same on all these flies. I find that the consistency in your flies is what really pays off in the long run because you want your flies to be the same every time so you know if it's working what's working. So here we go. We've got a little bit of the chenille stripped off there just to expose the core. If you don't know, that, that chenille's got a little piece of thread core in the middle. And I'll catch it down with that so you got a nice tight connection. But I like to leave the chenille on because it helps build just a little bit of extra bulk back here in the back of this. And like I said, it keeps me from having to wrap so much thread. I think where you put your thread is very important. I think how much you put on is very important. And you can kind of get crazy with it. You can overkill it and put too much on. 
So this first one, I'll pull it pretty tight, but I don't want to pull it so tight that I'm flaring those legs. That second one, I really sink it in. And then I do something kind of a little different. I don't know how everybody else does theirs, but I'll wrap my chenille up halfway up the body almost before maybe a third, um, somewhere in that like little more than a third position. And I'll catch my chenille with one catch of thread. And what that does is I haven't had to wrestle these rubber legs. And you can see I have these two pieces here. I've got a little strip cut. So both of my legs are exactly the same length. So now I don't have to worry about trimming this when I get done. I know the legs are the exact same length and I can take and double that rubber over and pinch it around my thread and put that leg exactly where I want it. I don't know if you can see that, but exactly where I want it. The legs are the exact same length and they'll be the exact same length on the other side. So it saves me time. I try to think when I'm tying these, how can I save time? How can I make them consistent? And if you find yourself doing that over and over again, I think you'll really enjoy fly tying. It can be kind of frustrating when you first get into it, but patterns like this that you can repeat over and over again that are consistent and produce fish. I mean, this is just a really fishy fly anyway. It, fish seem to just really like it. But a, a pattern that'll catch fish that you can reproduce pretty readily. I don't know if you saw there, I kind of crowded that leg a little bit. So I moved it forward a little bit. Don't be afraid to go back and move your stuff around. Nice thing about these rubber leg patterns like this are you can pull the rubber legs around and move them around when you get finished. Don't pull them too hard because you'll break them off, but you can pull them around and move them. You can use the chenille. My legs are kind of going everywhere right now, but we'll fix that in a matter of minutes. So I lock that in and with chenille like this, I like to pull the chenille up and kind of give my thread a good, good tug to make sure it's really sunk down in there. So almost done here. We're looking a little scraggly, just how I like them. Do a three or four turn whip finish. Tighten it up nice and well. Give her one more and now we're gonna play with our legs just a little bit. Now you could put a drop of super glue or head cement in there if you like. You can also super glue under this chenille to make them a little more durable. Um, I, don't, I don't find that it makes that big a difference. Chenille's pretty durable anyway, but some people do and if you're fishing them all the time, Maybe something you want to consider. So there we go. I pop my legs apart and we've got a finished bug. And that thing will fish right there, guys. So give that a try. Thank you.